Surface tension can hold objects, dry flows, and even clean our dishes. So it's fitting that one of the early pioneers of the subject, Agnes Pockles, was a self-taught scientist whose laboratory was also her kitchen. Agnes Pockles was born in Italy in 1862, the daughter of an Austrian army officer. After his retirement, the family moved back to Braunschweig, where Agnes graduated from the municipal high school. According to Agnes, I had a passionate interest in natural science, especially physics, and would have liked to study. Sadly, she had no opportunity to since universities at the time would not admit women. Instead, Agnes was expected to stay home and care for her ailing parents. Much of her time was spent cooking and cleaning, which afforded her the opportunity to observe surface tension phenomena firsthand. Surface tension is a macroscopic property, but it comes from intermolecular forces. Molecules tug on one another due to their shape and electron distribution in such a way that the pull between like molecules is strongest. A water molecule deep inside the fluid feels its neighbors tugging on it, but since it's equally surrounded on all sides, there's no net force on the molecule. But a molecule at the surface only feels the tug of neighbors in certain directions. That imbalance creates a net force that acts along the surface. Surface tension. What intrigued Agnes was how surface tension changed when a surface became contaminated. She built an apparatus to study this using a shallow tray filled with water. A movable metal partition separated the two sides of the tray, and a ruler allowed her to measure the size of her working surface. She used an apothecary's balance to measure the force necessary to lift a disc off the surface, thereby giving herself a measurement of the surface tension. My version of the Pockles trough isn't quite as fancy, but it's good enough to demonstrate a few of her discoveries, and you can recreate it yourself at home with a clean baking sheet and some aluminum foil. When Pockles added a different liquid or solid to one side of her trough, the surface tension dropped. We can see that happening here by the way our floating partition gets sucked to one side. The partition has a force, equal to the surface tension times length, acting on either side of it. When those forces are balanced, the partition is still, but when we contaminate one side, we reduce the surface tension there. The partition shifts toward the other direction, which changes the concentration of the contaminant and therefore changes the surface tension. Once the two surface forces balance again, the partition stops. By fixing the partition in different locations and measuring how the surface tension changed with area, Pockles found a pattern. When the contaminated surface was small, the surface tension was low. As the surface grew larger, the surface tension increased until it reached a maximum. Beyond that point, the surface tension remained constant, regardless of area. This makes sense if we think about the contaminant on a molecular scale. With a given volume of contaminant, a small surface area creates a high concentration. Any water molecules at the surface can barely feel the influence of other water molecules, so the surface tension is low. Increase the area and the contaminants spread out, reducing their influence and increasing the surface tension. Eventually, the contaminants form a molecular monolayer on the surface. They cannot get thinner, even with more area, so the surface tension stays constant. The world would probably never have learned about Pockle's work if she had not come across an article by John William Strutt, better known as Lord Rayleigh, about his own surface tension investigations, published in Naturwissenschaftliche Rundschau, which was kind of like a 19th century German physics today or American scientist. Agnes found the article through her younger brother Friedrich, who studied physics at university and shared his textbooks and journal access with his sister. Agnes wrote Lord Rayleigh a letter explaining her apparatus and many of the observations she'd made so far. Lord Rayleigh, in turn, forwarded the letter to Nature, which published it in 1891 with a brief and complimentary introduction from the Baron. Over the next three decades, Pockles continued to publish important results from her surface science experiments, despite never receiving a university appointment. In 1932, American scientist Irving Langmuir received the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for his own work in the subject, using a modified version of Pockles' apparatus to prove that these contaminants formed true molecular monolayers. Pockles' work was not completely unrecognized during her lifetime, however. In 1931, she was the first woman ever awarded the Laura R. Leonard Prize from the German Colloid Society, and in the following year, received an honorary doctorate for her 70th birthday from the Technical University of Braunschweig. Despite the obstacles she faced, Agnes Pockles made lasting contributions to surface chemistry with her studies. Today's experimental apparatuses and methodologies can be traced directly back to her work. That's a fact that would delight her, since she wrote in 1932, I learned to my great joy that my work is being used by others for their investigations. And for a scientist, there's no greater honor than that. Hey guys, thanks again for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe. And don't forget to check out the main site at fyfluiddynamics.com. If you want to help support this independent educational content, then you can check out my page over at Patreon. Otherwise, thanks for watching and see you next time.